First of all, thanks for joining us for Beyond the Podium. Um, we, we've seen the Libertarian Party here in Iowa as a major party in elections past, but a little bit different this time because you're not actually on the ballot after that challenge. Um, how has that changed your approach to this campaign uh, in District, uh, District uh, 1? Well, I'd say the main way that it's changed everything for us is instead of being able to just rely on ballot access, I have to specifically go more for name recognition on an individual level and making sure that people know how to spell my name properly, which isn't too specifically difficult. I have an incredibly common first name, <laughs> but the last name is a little bit uh, less usual in this specific area. Um, libertarians, I believe, historically have been more associated with the right side of the political spectrum. I know on your website uh, you like to highlight uh, stances on issues that, that you feel make you more of a, of a centrist option for voters. Uh, what, what are some of the policies you think people may not normally associate with libertarians? Well, the libertarians have a much more liberal view on social aspects of the political spectrum uh, as far as uh, like LGBTQ rights, uh, women's rep reproductive health rights, uh, those types of things. Uh, we do have a fairly conservative side on the fiscal aspect of politics though as we believe in minimal government spending and minimal government involvement. But as far as the social aspects, we believe you have the right to do whatever you want to do so long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Uh, we have uh, we've had uh, campaigns in the past, as I said here in Iowa, but but no victories. Um, I wonder wh where do you think uh, libertarians are struggling with connecting with Iowa voters, particularly now when we're seeing almost a decade of of largely Republican control here in Iowa. Well, I, I know a large part of it is people want to stick with the two-party system. However. We are breaking into that pretty heavily. Uh, we have major party status in the state of Iowa. We are a growing party, the fastest growing party in the state of Iowa, fastest growing party in the nation as well, um, which is helping or getting our message out there. A lot of people are starting to dissociate away from that two-party system that the United States has had for so long at this point. We have seen, in, historically, there have been other parties that have risen up, most recently uh, the Reform Party under Ross Perot in the 90s. Um, but, but the two-party system largely over 250 years has remained relatively dominant. Uh, how do you expect to change that? Because it seems like our government in and of itself has grown around that two-party system and for better or for worse has kind of insulated and protected it. Well, the biggest part for us is just to reach people on a more individual level and connect with them. Uh, people have different aspects where they believe politically because nobody actually 100% aligns with any particular party. However, if we can get more people to more align to our party, which we have done quite, uh, quite successfully in recent years, and is just talking with people and explaining, well, this is the libertarian point of view, and people generally are like, that does sound pretty intriguing and interesting. So. Uh, we have uh have seen an explosion in money in politics just in the the presidential race alone uh, one of the candidates has raised a billion dollars in three months we see billions of dollars being poured into races all over the country uh, a lot of this ties back to citizens united back in 2010 that ruling that equated uh, money as a form of free speech is money a form of free speech I believe money is a form of free speech. I, you have the freedom to give your money to whoever you want to. Uh, that is just part of the public property rights that libertarians believe in. Is It is your property. You have the right to do so with however you choose. So then I have to ask then, how, how do you break through? Because it seems like money is a big reason why these two parties are able to maintain such dominance both at the local, state, and federal level much more of a grassroots approach and a much more direct approach uh, speaking to people as opposed to just these giant canvassing campaigns over, uh, over various commercials, media outlets, those kind of options. We have to, because we don't have those millions upon millions of dollars that the other campaigns have uh, from the Democratic or Republican parties, we just have to speak to people directly. Uh, most of the money that I've spent in my campaign was for gas in my car. Just driving to places and being like, hey folks, how are you guys doing? Have you heard of us? 
We, uh, we've seen a number of social issues come back to the forefront uh, in recent years. I think nothing more than abortion. Uh, you, you mentioned the libertarian stance on this. Does the federal government play a role in, in either exacting the rules of abortion access or uh, protecting abortion access as Roe v. Wade once did? I don't, and this is a part that's a little bit split within the libertarian party. But I know my personal beliefs are, I don't believe a government should have the authority to tell people what they can do with health care, whether it be abortion, vaccination, anything. Uh, if you wanted to use more experimental health care options, use them. If, it, if your doctor believes that that is the best opportunity for you, absolutely, you should use that. Uh, and I believe that's the same way with abortion. Uh, if if you and your doctor were to decide that that is the best route, who am I to tell a doctor what to do? Um, obviously, libertarians associated with uh, striving for a smaller federal government. What, what are some of the pieces of federal government you think need to go? There are a lot of regulatory commissions and agencies at the federal government level that are just redundant and excessive bloat spending throughout the federal government. Uh, when you look at uh, offices like the IRS, they could be incredibly simplified, very streamlined. Uh, the ATF could be incredibly simplified and streamlined just or outright defunded. A lot of these other organizations where their entire purposes were already established within other agencies of the government, but then they were brought to a more, uh, uh, to a larger presentation throughout the federal government through bloat spending, which as we're currently sitting at just around $36 trillion in federal debt, uh, which equates to, if you broke that down per capita, about $183,000 per person, that's an, essentially an extra mortgage that everybody has over their heads that we're paying. One thing, one argument uh, in support of, of a stronger federal government has been the interconnectivity of the states in the modern era, whereas they, uh, earlier, or earlier in American's history they were more isolated and you would see a necessity for more differences um, between the states. Do you see that anymore? And, and where, where do you see that needing to be again? Because obviously we have at least a level of standardization when it comes to environmental protection, to education, uh, and then even to healthcare. Um, what roles do the federal government play in those? Because uh, we still want to see Americans able to afford health care. Let's we'll start there. Where, where would libertarians fix the health care system? So the health care system that we currently have was brought on actually largely due to, it was made illegal to increase the minimum wage. So in order to bring on new employees, the health care system was established. If you eliminated the health care system as it is currently and uh, prevent a lot of those blocks and regulations and force the individual health insurance agencies to compete each other compete against each other in a financial aspect that will drive prices down because if I can go to any of 200 different companies to buy health insurance as opposed to these six that I have available to me now those six have to compete with the remaining 194 and that'll bring prices down naturally because they have to be competitive to stay alive so obviously you, you prefer a more capitalistic approach to this than a, uh, a regulated capitalistic yes. approach. Um, so then on education, uh, we've seen funding for colleges, which used to be largely handled by the states, drop significantly and has led to tuition increases. Do, do the state universities need to go back to the states and can we afford that under our current system? Um, essentially that would boil down to uh, if you removed a lot of the regulations in colleges and universities, uh, that would give people more access to college and universities at a lower price. So you would increase the student population, therefore increasing money into the colleges. There would still need to be some amount of funding from the states, uh, but states are generally a little bit more uh, efficient in funding their individual colleges and universities. I have to ask, when it comes to uh, maybe freeing the country from federal government control, uh, you mentioned that money does equal free speech. Uh, 
how do you do that? Because obviously companies, capitalistic corporations, have an awful lot of speech then that they can wield not only over the federal government, but the state governments. Well, when you look at that, uh, if you actually were to go to a full free market capitalist system, corporations still need employees. Employees would then have the ability to collectively bargain uh, via you know, independent unions and uh, various different other methods that the corporations would have to listen to their employees. Uh, your employees are 99.9% .9 with the 0.1% at the top that is running that corporation. They're massively outnumbered. They'll have to be forced to listen to all their employees as opposed to right now, they have the ability to ignore their employees and just be bailed out by federal government. Before we wrap up here, I have, I have to face a, an honest truth here. Uh, what, what are the goals of this election, and if the Libertarian Party again reaches the threshold to reach major party status, uh, what's, what's the mission for the next election cycle? So our goals, I mean, if, if we can't win outright, which given it is significantly more difficult as a write-in candidate, there has historically been multiple write-in candidates for U.S. Congress, but it is a much larger hurdle to cross. Uh, we'll still have a fair amount of influence throughout the election cycle and throughout election day itself. And then the lessons that we have learned through um, the ballot access issues that we've had, now we can implement those into the next election cycle. So we've figured out some of the things that we've done wrong in the past and we can, at the state central committee, have figured out a reorganization so we can not have those hurdles in the future. Well, we will see what happens on election night. Nicholas Gluba, thanks for joining mm -hmm. us for Beyond the Podium. Thank you.